gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory. We are back in, well actually we're in Wellington right now. We're heading out to the rocket pasture for Cloud Busters. So, let's get ready for some fun. Lots of days of high flying rockets. All right, so we're out here with Infinity, working on getting it ready to go. Um, and we've got, um, I had a quick link on the end of here and I had tied it through this. Um, I decided I really didn't want to trust this. These are a little weak and can often snap off. So I've gone ahead and I've drilled two holes through my nose cone and I'm just slotting this through. And then gonna, as soon as I get enough cord, I don't care how much cord I waste, I've got tons of it. Just do a simple square knot on there. And now that's a better attached nose cone and it's less likely of coming apart. So we'll continue on prep. Folding a parachute, you end up wanting to, uh, well, basically you lay it flat, you fold it in half, so you base about this big, and you take the shot cord, the shroud lines, lay them up in here, and then you fold it in half, and then you are Z-folding, so half and half down, and that's what you want. put in there. So, as you can see, it's got 14 second delay on it right now. I need to take four seconds off to get to a 10 second delay. Gotcha. Yeah, this is here in minus four second removal. This in faces the motor. Okay. Take the washer off. Because what the washer will do will subtract one second less. And so you can always, if you forget, it's like this end faces the motor correctly. Right. See that side shallow, that one's deeper. Okay. So if that says eight seconds, you want that toward there. Two, one, ignition. Big one. So basically. Four seconds removal phases there. Just drop it down on there and just see that's all you're taking off. And you just drill it. Just the washer spacing is all that ends up coming off. Yep. Okay. And that's unless you want to do one less second. Yeah. Done. Just like that, dude. Yeah, it took bit. stuff off. Oh, that's so cool. And that's okay. the thing is that if you just like four was too much, you went to three, you could do that with the, the spacer. The spacer. Okay. It's warm now. Ta -da. You're set. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anytime. All right. Now that we got a lesson in delay drilling tools from uh, the Wichita Science Center guy, wait for Bob to go by. Uh, we're going to go ahead and load the ejection charge into the rocket. So we open up this package here that came with all sorts of little stuff. I need to double check what the washer's for in the instructions, but. A lot of launches going on today. Okay, that's right, that's right, okay. So this little washer guy goes down in there. So he's in the motor. Then we take, and the instructions say to go ahead and actually put the full contents in there. So I'm gonna put a little more than just my one gram of black powder, because they say for three inches and larger, 
you need a little more. And I really want to make sure she comes open. And at that point, the whole thing's going to go in. So now we've got the entire little black powder charge it comes with. And these vials are really handy, so keep hold of them. All right. Then we take this red plug and we go ahead and push this red plug in the back of the motor. Now that red plug is what makes sure there's actually going to be pressure in here and will blow the motor open. So we just redouble check our instructions. It says uh, washer, then it says charge, and then it says place the uh, rounded end of the cap into the ejection charge well, and we're good to go. So then the next step is the igniter. You do not put the igniter in though until we are at the pad. And so I take the igniter here and I'm gonna take a little strip of tape and tape it to the side of my rocket. And that little strip of tape is our best friend because that keeps our pretty little danger wires all contained. And that's what we wanna see. So I'm just taking them and tape them to the rocket real quick, right near my CP. And we'll uh, also need to write the CG on there when we get up there. But we'll double check it just to make sure it's where I think it is. So now we're gonna come around to the back of the rocket. Back here. And the motor just slides right in the back. And then I need my screwdriver here to back out these screws. Feels crazy talking to myself out here. I'm the only one over here. And so it just goes right on like that. For one. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull a second one out. A good little bit. Turn him over and crank him on there. Now the only point of these is just to make sure that we do not lose the motor uh, after burnout that ejection charge will want to push the motor back out of the body tube and we'd rather have it uh, be pushing the um, parachute out so now the rocket in there everything's taped to the side our next step is to head on up to the RSO table <laughs> gonna do a CG double check so it should be somewhere I was sitting here like how did you break an eyeball with a red it would be I got it now I understand our CG is right there so it's actually just on the bottom edge here of my logo which I really like that up to the table we got one of these flight cards these flight cards you fill out your name city name your rocket scratch the or name of the rocket, your manufacturer, your weight, your motor, say you've read it, what you've got on it, and then you take this up to the RSO and he's going to check it over. How's it going? Good, how are you? Pretty good. H100. Yep, it's a little DMS. Cardboard rocket. What's the function of the green tape? Oh, it's just there to help hold the igniter in. I just put a bunch of extra tape. <laughs> just giving myself something to play with. Looks good. Okay. Okay. Motor ejection. Is yours? H100, not, nothing very involved there. Looks good. All right, thank you very much. And that's how you clear RSO. All right, now that we have uh, cleared RSO, we get to head out to the pads uh, only when the range is clear in order to set up our rocket on the launch rails. So this will be a fun, fun flight ahead of us. There's always a level of just hoping everything goes right, but gotta also make sure you keep track of which pad you set up on.
tape off, cardboard off. Keep that with you, don't leave it in the range. Straighten out your igniter wire. You want to get that as far up there as you can. Oh, I forgot to strip these. I have to do that real quick with my teeth. See if I can, ah, perfect, I can hand strip them. Perfect, that's what I want to see. So, send it all the way up there, bend it over. Remember, we're just going to slap this piece of tape. Wait, nope, we want it right up there. Up there. Slap this piece of tape up underneath here. That's holding the igniter all the way up there. And we got our two wire leads. We didn't end up needing this extra, so we'll take that back with us. Next, we take two leads. An important thing to do is to count where your rocket's at. So I'm actually on the sixth pad over and these are called the 40 pads. So I'm on pad 46 and that will go right here in this pad number. So let's keep going and let's get this launched. All right, bonus clip for you guys here. This is how you replace an igniter. This is not a fun thing to have to do. So, yep, my igniter did burn, did not start it. I probably should have used one of these from the get go, but here we go, replace it with, this is known as a Slim Gem. Um, they are a lot more powerful igniters, and I personally prefer Slim Gems, but I figured I'd just use the motor one first. It was a mistake. Checking continuity on six. That shows it's okay. Okay, we're going to pad 46 Boyson from Harrisonville, Missouri. Oh crap, this is me. The name of the rocket is Infinity. A scratch built kit flying at H100 does have a new igniter in it. I don't know if he still is on board. We can smile and wave just in case. We're going to launch Infinity in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. Boost on that one headed towards the sun. That is the worst part. Need a parachute about now. Okay, there it is. All right. On the late side, but that's okay. Yeah, I should have shaved off a few more seconds Boost there. On that one, Boyson. Last on the 40 pad, I had a choice between 10 and 8 seconds. I went with 10 okay. instead of 8. I should have gone on with 8. <laughs> Oh, hello, look at that. Thought I might be in the stream, but God smiles upon me today, because look at that. She is sitting parete right there. 
That is so nice. Look at that. Nothing's wet. Hopefully I got onboard video you guys will see here in just a moment, but let's try and get over there first. All right, so we've got nose cone fully intact, parachute. Always a good thing when you're starting. Check your parachute. Ooh, I got a little bit of burning. Means I didn't have quite enough uh, dog barf in my rocket. Um, the dog barf is completely out. Yep, should have packed a little more dog barf in there from what I'm seeing. Um, let's check the camera. She is not recording as far as I can tell, but it's also bright out here, so. We are completely intact. It's always good whenever you're checking your rocket, just give it a good once over, make sure nothing's cracked. You won't cert if any of your fins have cracks in them or there's any damage to your uh, body tube. So it has to be completely reflyable on the spot when you bring it back to the uh, RSO table. So. But with that, we're gonna conclude the Infinity Build Series. Thanks so much for watching this, guys. I hope you learned a lot about doing your level one cert flight. And uh, you have lots of success out here at the range. So thanks for watching, gang. Please check me out on uh, Facebook and at the link to my website in the description below. There'll be lots of rocketry content to come and hope you enjoy.